hi welcome back today in this video we are going to see how we can make use of spring ai jdbc chat memory to store the chat inside a relational databases which will be postgres in our case so during our last video we have seen one example wherein we were storing the chat history inside the in memory that is ram but there were couple of challenges when it comes to storing the chat inside the memory because one of the challenges when the application is restarted the entire chat memory is lost another one is if we are running the multiple instances of the same application then each instance will have its own chat memory so this becomes problematic in case of production environment so this is where the jdbc chat memory becomes helpful wherein we will store our chat history inside the relational databases which will be postgres in our case so before we can start with the implementation uh, let's understand how jdbc chat memory works under the hood so for this we have added one dependency related to jdbc chat memory and inside that we have one class which is jdbc chat memory and this class is implementing the chat memory interface which has defined the methods to store the new uh, chat memory uh, to store the new entry inside chat memory to retrieve the existing entries from the chat memory and to delete the chat memory so here you can see three sql queries are defined one is related to the add which will be useful for creating new entry then we have get for getting the existing entries from um, the chat memory and another one is the clear which is the delete statement so here you can see these Uh, these sql queries are performing operation on ai chat memory table uh, wherein the entire conversation will be stored and if you sc scroll through this class you will find that we have three methods first one is add to create new entry then we have get and we have clear and these are making use of the queries that we have seen above like query add query get and query clear so this is how jdbc chat memory works un under the hood so let's understand one this with the help of one simple example i have created one sample application wherein uh, we will go through the entire functionality and how we are making use of jdbc chat memory so coming to the first these are the list of dependencies we have added coming to the first dependencies which is spring boot starter web which is useful for creating the rest apis then we have spring ai starter model open ai Uh, this will be useful for interacting with the llm provider we will make use of uh, google gemini which is compatible with the open ai library then we have the spring ai starter model chat memory jdbc this is where uh, we this is this is the dependency from where this particular class jdbc chat memory is uh, is uh, present and this will be useful for storing our uh, memory inside the relational databases which will be postgres then we have the spring uh, starter data jpa which will be provides the jpa context and make our uh, operations easier while working with the databases and then we have added the postgres uh, driver for driver for interacting with the postgres uh, db and then we have the spring ai bomb which is managing the dependencies for uh, spring ai uh coming to the next part which is related to the application properties so here you will see in order to interact with the uh, postgres uh, we have added the uh, configuration like the url uh, postgres username password and the postgres driver the username and password are coming from environment variables and in order to interact with the llms we have added the configuration related to uh, google gemini like the host uh, the endpoint which we are calling which model we are using and the api key which is also coming from the environment variable and then we have added the configuration related to logging we will come to this part and this will be useful to analyze what all queries are getting printed uh, what all queries are getting executed behind the scenes now coming to the chat client config so this is where we are defining the beans related to the chat memory and chat client so in our case uh, we are creating the jdbc chat memory and behind the scenes it is making use of jdbc template 
to store our uh, chat history inside the relational databases and then we have the chat client uh, using chat client we will interact with the LLMs which will be Google Gemini in our case and while creating the chat client we are making use of chat client builder the chat uh, this is where the chat memory will uh, come into the picture uh, the bean that we have created this will be passed here inside the chat memory and then uh, while creating the chat client builder we are passing this chat memory with the help of message chat memory advisor this will be responsible for uh, managing the all the memory related operations so all the user related messages or the messages that we are getting from AI and all the all those messages will be stored and retrieved uh, from the JDBC memory with the help of message chat memory advisor then uh, coming to the controller here we have created three simple endpoints so that we can interact with the LLM first endpoint is API chat post endpoint wherein we can post our queries and get the response from LLM and whatever interactions we are doing those will be stored inside the JDBC chat memory so here you can see we are accepting some input from the user we are sending that uh, input to the uh, LLM provider with the help of chat client and once we get the response we are returning it back to the user then we have the next endpoint which is the related to the getting the chat history this is just for uh, debug uh, for troubleshooting wherein if we have to see what all things are stored inside the chat memory we have created this endpoint and here you will see we are passing the conversation id as default so by default if we are not providing any conversation id uh, spring uh, make use of default as the conversation id and then we have the delete endpoint so in order to delete our chat memory uh, we are making use of this endpoint which will call the chat memory with the clear method and as i mentioned earlier uh, if you are not providing the conversation id all the entries will be stored with the id as default so that's why while clearing the memory we are specifying the id as default now uh, let's see this example in action wherein we will see um, how the me how the entries are getting stored in memory but before that i will showcase you one example uh, the i have started the postgresql with the help of docker and here uh, we are connected with the help of workbench j uh, tool so here you can see we are connected to the local host and the schema is public now if we see there are no tables that exist inside the schema now when we start our application AI chat memory table will be uh, created just a second so now if I refresh this window uh, let me reconnect so here you can see uh, just a second here you can see AI chat memory table is created and uh, it contains the four fields conversation id content type and timestamp conversation id is nothing but the unique identifier against which your messages will be stored so in our case it will be default since uh, we are seeing the simple example wherein the entire uh, conversation will be stored against a single id then the content will store the exact content that the user is giving and the response that llm is giving to us type will be uh, type will be used to identify the user or the llm provider which will be assistant and the timestamp uh, based on the uh, conversation the based on the timestamp wherein we are sending or receiving the response those particular will be stored inside this now uh, coming to the uh, dashboard if you see uh, initially this uh, table will be empty now when we start interacting with the LLM uh, the particular entries will be stored inside that table so uh, let's say uh, we are interacting with our endpoint API chat wherein we are sending one simple message hello my name is Banti Ragani so we will get some response from LLM now if we check the content of this table here you will see the conversation id is default the content which user has provided is stored here along with the timestamp and whatever response that we have received is also stored inside this table 
and the type is of the user is mentioned as assist and which is nothing but the response that we got from the LLM provider. Now if we check the conversation, uh, if we check the uh, history which is maintained in database, we can do that with the help of chat history endpoint. So here you will see we are getting the exact uh, messages that we have just seen inside the uh, AI chat memory table. And then we have the delete endpoint. If we have to clear the conversation history, we have the delete endpoint with API chat history. And once we click on this, the conversation will be cleared. And now if we check the AI chat memory table, the conversation should be cleared. So here you can see uh, no entries are present inside this. And now if we try to ask the follow up question from uh, LLM what's my name since there is uh, no conversation history stored in database we will get that uh, we will get some response that I don't have a memory of past conversation since we deleted the en entire conversation history and now again if we check uh, this particular table two entries should exist which is what's my name and the response that we got from the LLM provider so this was the simple example wherein the entire conversation was getting stored again a single conversation id and now what if our application has the multiple user and we want to store the for each user we want to store the separate memory or we want to have the separate memory for each user in that case this is where we have created one more controller again the this particular control has, has the same endpoint which is the uh, API users and which will be useful for accepting input from the user sending it to LLM and getting the response then we have the chat history endpoint to get the uh, history of the conversation and then we have the delete endpoint the only difference that you will notice is in case of these APIs we are accepting the user ID as input and then based on the user ID we are creating the memory for example let's say the user ID is 1 so while sending a message to the LLM provider here we are specifying that that the chat memory conversation ID should be based on the user ID which means for each and every user a separate uh, conversation entries will be created inside that particular table also while retrieving the chat history from the memory we are accepting the user ID so while retrieving the uh, data from chat memory or relational databases those data will be retrieved based on the user id same is the case with clear history if you want to clear the chat uh, chat memory for a particular user that will be cleared based on the user id so i will showcase you one example wherein let's say um, now we will make use of two characters to showcase you how the chat memory is created separately for each of the user so first user is Alice so first uh, the Alice is sending the first message hello my name is Alice and it will be stored inside the uh, relational database uh, so here you can see the conversation ID is Alice because we are storing the uh, conversation based on the user ID which is Alice and the content of the uh, messages that we have seen just now now if Alice asks the follow up question LLM will provide the correct answer because it has the memory stored inside the uh, database. Now if we have to see the entry for Alice we will get 4 entries. Uh, first one was my name is Alice then the, we got some greeting message then the follow up question and we got the follow up response. Now consider one another example let's say Bob's come and say hello my name is Bob. So for Bob a separate entry will be created inside the database. So here you can see for Bob two new entries are created. First one is the input message and second one, second one is the response that we got. Now let's say we are, uh, if we Bob asks the follow up question, now we will get the correct answer because the memory is stored inside the database, your name is Bob. 
now if we delete the memory for bob and then ask the follow up question then we will get an error so now if you see all the entries for bob are cleared but the entries for alice and default are still present so let's say bob is asking what's my name now we will get an error response stating i don't know you and when the same question is asked by alice we will still get the correct response because the conversation for alice is still present inside the database so this is how um, we are creating the separate memories for each of the user and this is how the conversation context is maintained separately for each of the user with the help of id in our case which is the user id based on which the different uh, conversations are getting stored inside the database so this was all regarding the single user and multi user application now coming to this part uh, wherein we have added the logging properties so if we have to see what all queries are getting executed behind the scenes we can add these uh, to uh, we can add the configuration for logging related to jdbc template and if we have to see the query parameters values what are getting passed then we can add uh, this logging configuration as well so for example uh, let's say i am sending one message what's my uh, name since we have the entries present for default we will uh, uh, we will get the error response but still we can see uh, what all queries are executed getting executed behind the scenes so here you can see first the select operation was performed and the value for this is can be shown here uh, here you can see uh, since we were uh, getting the select query was getting executed behind the scenes the conversation id is mentioned as default and the value which denotes last 100 messages we have to retrieve and then the insert query the insert operation was performed wherein uh, two two entries were uh, added inside the table one for user and one for assistant due to which you will see now two new entries will appear for the conversation id default so here you can see two new entries have appeared what's my name as i said before i have no memory so this is how if you have to see what all queries are getting executed behind the scenes then you can add this logging configuration now there is one more part uh, let's say uh, we have understood earlier that when we start our application then the ai chat memory table is getting created on the fly now if we are working with the any database migration tools like flyway and if we have to disable this table creation step then what we can do we can add this entry spring ai chat memory jdbc initialize schema equals to false then what you can do you can create your table based on the uh, data source and the flyway or migration tool that you are making use of so this is the simple create table command and we are creating the index so you can make use of this script and uh, specify inside the uh, flyway configuration if you are making use of so for postgres as well we have mentioned it here yeah so that was all regarding the jdbc chat memory using postgres and we have created one detailed article related to it wherein you can see what all the things that we have discussed in the in this particular tutorial and also the the source code for the example can be found on github uh, we have created uh, the github repo for this so you can check out if you are interested yeah so that's all from mine thank you